What's up, everybody? It's Make It Make Sense, and Nickelodeon got exposed all up and through this new documentary. I'm going to let you guys know now some of the stuff was disturbing. A lot of it was disturbing. And I'm not surprised. Like the video as the intro plays, because we got a lot to get into. Could somebody please make it make sense? Make it make sense to me intellectually. Make it make sense. <laughs> make it make sense. Make sense. Make it make sense. You know what was up. Big moves. Surfer. Make it make sense. Tell me how you squeeze it. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. about the bangs that you say. Make it make sense. Tell me about the things in your dream. Hey. Work for you. I'm singing alone. No, I've been stopped liking you since last year. Okay, guys, so I'm not surprised at all by any of this stuff that we always hear child stars had it super hard. Everybody sees the glamour. A lot of these kids pay for everything that their parents are doing, they're supplying funds for the entire family. And for those parents who are stage parents, I get it. But we hear time and time again that these kids are not protected. And then we wonder why Amanda Bynes has struggles as an adult. Because all they saw at the time was somebody beautiful. We really had no idea what these kids went through. We just saw the money. And as a person who Nickelodeon was a big part of my life, when they said, well, they didn't make this correlation. They just said Nickelodeon was not for teaching. And it's so true. Nickelodeon was basically like the antithesis of Disney, right? Like if you really, if you are from my era, then you'll understand exactly what I mean. They weren't trying to teach you anything. It literally was just laughs. And now being able to step outside of myself and step outside of being a fan, what Nickelodeon did effectively was move along the concept of children now laughing at things that are very adult in nature, not necessarily having a understanding of what it meant, but it was funny. So when you see images like this, As a child, you just think it's stuffing, you know, pickles in somebody's mouth. But we're not talking about Phaedra and Apollo with a pickle, who are very much adult. We're talking about kids in very adult situations with other, like, speaking to an audience of children. And we look now, you know, the kids today... They have been exposed to adult things at a very early age, and I really do think that it has a lot to do with how we progress. Now, if you only if you do OF, it's more the normal. It's, it's, <laughs> OF is like the norm now. Back in the day, whenever a celebrity released one of those adult tapes, their career was over. Now it's like that's how you get in the club. Uh, Devin Campbell, thank you so much for the super sticker. I appreciate you. But yeah, it was a lot of imagery like this. So if you don't know, this documentary is on HBO Max. I think you can also get it on Netflix now. Because when I was on YouTube, I saw when I looked it up, it showed Netflix. But it's a lot of things like this that you don't even think about. As a kid, why are all these people's feet showing so often? 
it's imagery that you really never thought about. As a kid, you're just watching somebody do something funny. But it's very adult, very sick writers in the background writing this stuff for kids, exposing kids to things like, I think there was a scene where, was it Keenan or Kel? One of them was in peanut butter. I think it was Keenan or Kel. They were in peanut butter and there were dogs licking the peanut butter off them. There was a lot of, I don't know how to say this and stay monetized. Um, it might just look like yolk on the face, but it also looks like man butter. So there was a lot of man butter shots on these kids. That's a lot. Let me hold on one second. Let me get my. Um, let me see what you guys are saying. No, it was all that. Yeah, C shots. Okay. Definitely hit the like button. Hold on one second, guys. Let me get my notes. Okay. Got my notes. So this is actually part one. If you guys like this, then um, I'll definitely do the other parts. This is part one, and I think maybe about 15 minutes into the second episode. So basically, Dan Snyder is the devil. Who even knew who Dan Snyder was? When I see this guy, the only thing I think about is for head of the class, which was actually his entryway into Hollywood. And he actually co-wrote head of the class. But... Even in the documentary, they're telling us that he would lie about things. His dad went to Harvard, so he was telling people that he went to Harvard. And he also had an issue with the way that he looked. He didn't want to be typecast as, as they say, quote unquote, the fat guy. So he always had something to prove. But I, you know, if you're writing it and you're writing the jokes about fat people, I'm not quite sure. You did not advance the character because it was a lot of jokes about him being fat. But this is Dan Snyder. He is basically who is being alleged exploited all these kids on this show. Somebody said they watched all four episodes. I remember that in the 80s. Yeah. I, I mean, head of the class wasn't anything that I was really, you know, into. But I can remember, um, I feel like my maybe my sister watched it or something. But I definitely knew everything about Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon was like my thing. So... They give us like a little background about him, you know, to be a writer at such a young age and make a name for yourself is how he got Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon brought him on and wanted him to write for this show that they were doing called All That. And he jumped at the chat, like he jumped at it. Um... So yeah, he was he was approached by the producers to develop all of that. He mentored the kids and would groom them by letting them know I chose you. So as a kid, you have you're in this space where okay, this is the boss and he's telling me I feel sp I was chosen. It makes the kid feel special. It ingratiates the kid to this man. And Oh, what's up? We got a. <laughs> I mentioned her name and she popped up. Uh, Reddit Lane, that is my sister in real life. Um, but yeah, it ingratiates these kids to this man, and it's a weird power dynamic because if he doesn't like something, you're still a kid, and your parents weren't really allowed on set with you like that, except for Amanda Bynes. So now you have a space where it is literally just you and Dan. Dan can make you feel great about yourself, and Dan can make you feel less than. It's a weird, weird power structure. Um, somebody said, is he in jail? No, he's not in jail. Um, they said that Dan was a kid at heart. He kept everything really light in the beginning. Initially, the people who were around him, the writers, all the kids, they thought that he was inspiring. But as always, when these people start to get more power is when you start to see just who they really are. 
Um, somebody said something that I thought was pretty poignant. Um, they said child stars are vulnerable and power structures are already off. Definitely. Because they're doing everything for their family. They they are the breadwinner. It's a kid who knows that they're making the money for the family, but they still have the rules of a kid. It, it's definitely not a normal life. So we get Liam. Liam was one of the young black kids on the show, but he said he always felt uncomfortable because they always had him in leotards. And I, on the on the surface, you never think about this because I'm just thinking it's a funny thing, but I don't know that I would fully be comfortable in leotards. I might wear the uh, occasional hoochie daddy shirt, but to be in a leotard as your body's developing and you're already like... I could see why he would feel uncomfortable. And he said that they always put him in leotards and he felt exposed. But nothing was worse than this, where they made him wear, again, tights and underwear. But he also had, wait, where is it? Are these out of order? Hmm. Let me upload this picture because I definitely want you guys to be able to see this. Let's see. They had him as a character called Nose Boy. He said he was in tights and underwear, but they put a prosthetic nose on him and then they put prosthetic noses on his arm. So I want you guys to see what the end result was of these noses on his arm. Now, for those of you guys who've already seen this, you know exactly what's about to happen. But um, little by little, these kids were forced to do very adult things. If you saw this, although it is a nose, it looks like something else. So it, you guys see where I'm going with this? Technically, it's a nose, but to an adult eye, it looks like something else. Right, the prophet. Right. What I'm glad to see in this documentary is, again, people speaking truth to power. But when you see this now, it's shocking when you see this now, you think, how could this go on for so long when it's not just Dan Snyder? People had to okay it. But what happens is these people are okaying it because they're making a lot of money. Why are they going to buck the system if nobody's saying anything, the censors are allowing it, and money is being made? So he was able to get in with all these kids, get them to do all these very adult things on camera and make a lot of money for it. Why would why are, are these kids' feet always showing? Why are these kids always in something that seems like an adult situation? It's the it's the running theme and we're only on episode 1 and there's four episodes. Oh, for a lot of you, I know some of you people, some of you guys were like, I'm not paying for HBO Max. I didn't even realize I was still paying for HBO Max until I looked for this. <laughs> I got HBO Max for the DC stuff, but DC isn't really putting anything else out. And HBO Max kind of sucks. Um, Let's see. So this girl... She was like the original Amanda Bynes. Um, she was funny. She was young. He loved her while she was young. But as she got older, producers called her parents and said she's getting fat. And we already have a fat one. The girl was not only doing all that and in school, but she was also a dancer. So naturally the fat fell off. And as soon as the fat fell off and they couldn't use her so much as a kid because she had developed, they fired her basically and replaced her with somebody who she suggested, Amanda Bynes. But what does it do to a kid's psyche when you are calling them up at home and letting the parents know you're fat 
and we already have a fat one, so we don't need you. Lose the weight. It felt like it was like a good old boys club in there, but everything was designed to entice children to watch. Um, let's see. We got into Amanda Bynes. So we have like, we have almost a thousand people in here. Definitely hit the like button. Um, it's appreciated. This is also the girl who he told as soon as she got the job, I was the one who got you this job. I was the one who picked you. He also wanted to develop her own show with her. Sound familiar? Because that's exactly what he did with Amanda Bynes when Amanda became his favorite. Now, so far, none of these people are technically saying that they were touched, but they were put in, these kids were put in very adult scenarios. And it's not okay. There's always one of these C shots over and over again. Don't be fool people. Um, so Amanda Bynes, who actually was my favorite, I remember Amanda on all of that. I really thought she was like the most funny person in the world. Her comedic timing was always on point. She was extremely funny. I really, really liked Amanda. She was one of my faves. I always thought that Amanda would go on to do like Saturday Night Live and stuff like that. But later in life, you could see that Amanda, things that happened to Amanda and she struggles with her mental health now, like a lot of child stars. Um, so Dan basically catapults Amanda Bynes to superstardom at a very, very young age and kind of takes her career under his wing and gets a lot of his notoriety with her success. So it's like they're too connected. And then we find out that Amanda's parents were the worst kind of stage parents, hovering over her, basically making her feel like she had to be perfect. Um... Every kid on set went to school on set, but oftentimes Amanda would not be there. Amanda would be with Dan. They would be developing scripts, working on skits. Why wasn't this little girl mandated to be in school every day that the other children were mandated to? Because Dan was the boss and Dan liked her? It's really, really deep and disturbing. Um, again, they said Amanda's parents put her very high expectations on her. And um, Amanda's dad actually cultivated a very strong relationship with Dan. So why wasn't Amanda's dad also in the room with their child and Amanda? Like, just because Dan is the boss and Dan is helping her career, if you are allowed on set and when other parents aren't, where are you when your daughter's supposed to be homeschooled on set but she's with the boss as an as a child i feel like there have to be rules in place that would determine the amount of time a child can spend with an adult that is not their parent and or teacher in what space would i don't know let's say you work for Let's say you work for a Fortune 500. Could the CEO of the Fortune 500 say, I want to spend three or four hours with your kid? You'd be like, what? Or it's parent-teacher day. I mean, it's like, it's bring your child to work day. And they said, okay, I want to show your child what I do. So I'm going to let your child come and sit with me. And then like, it just, you would be like, what the hell is going on? Same thing applies with this girl's boss. There should be a setting where the boss is with all the children working on skits. It should not be this one child who's eight, nine years old is in an adult's office for extended periods of time missing school to do this. It's some sanction. So there's a lot of photos and stuff of Dan, you know, hugging her. Under normal circumstances, if this were her dad, it'd be one thing. But if she's on set, massaging Dan's shoulders as a kid, that's a problem. 
That's a real, real problem. So Amanda gets the Amanda show. Dan is the creator, and it's the first time that he is listed as the creator of a show. So this is a very big deal for Dan. So Dan is allowed to hire writers. He hires these ladies. Um, and there's another writer. These are the two female writers. They said, initially working for Dan was very fun, but then he became frightening. He also told them that we're going to hire you. I don't technically think women are funny, but we're going to hire you. And you have to split a salary. These two women are working on network television, a SAG production, mind you, a SAG production, which means that there's a whole union involved. They are told you are going to split one salary and you're basically going to like it. But the men got full salaries. Uh, yes, please hit the like button. Let's see where we are on likes. And replay gang, let me know if you want me to do all of this entire series. Because I know, I feel like a lot of people are not about to download HBO Max. <laughs> um, Lorenzo says, California has strict labor law in California for child stars. But they were sure getting away with it. He's gross. Yeah, it's pretty bad. So, okay. Again, Dan would tell them, I don't think women are funny. Do you remind, Do you mind if I refer to y'all as the girls? And so both women were like, no, you know, I guess it's okay. You can call us the girls. And he said, good. Because I don't like women who are uptight. So that let them know they can't really say anything that he won't like. A, he already doesn't think that we're funny, but he hired us at half the rate. B, had they said, no, you can't call us the girls, he probably would have fired them. Okay, thanks. Uh, girl, what's that date? Girl, what's the date? Says it's on Amazon Prime, Discovery, and Hulu. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much for that. I have HBO Max, so please do the whole thing. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm just sitting here thinking, what a horrible existence. You're not even getting paid to do the same work as everybody around you. Your boss is degrading you. He must have thought you were funny or somebody must have thought you were funny because you're you were hired. It's like a mind fuck. Okay. So we get to them talking about this character. Dan named this Amanda Bind character which I remembered. I used to think this skit was so funny. It was a recurring skit. Her name was Penelope Taint. If you don't know what a taint is, it is literally the space between a man's berries and their, you know, butthole. I don't know how else to say it. He named a character Taint. This was a children's show that was developed for children. And you have this little girl constantly telling people her name is Penelope Taint. Now, as a kid, I didn't really know what that is. But you know what I think now? I feel like that's a signal for pedos. Now, they didn't mention this in the documentary. This is just the way I'm thinking. And you guys can tell me in the comments if I'm way off here or not. But if you have a show where you have little girls and boys always showing their feet, always looking like they have a C-shot on their face, wearing basically dicks on their arms, you're going to have an audience of kids who watch it. But who's to say that pedos who are into this kind of stuff don't watch it as well? So you've not only increased your viewing audience, but you are scratching the itch of some very nasty people. That's what I was thinking. Like from a business vantage point, 
Nickelodeon's not stopping this because Nickelodeon is making money off of it. There's no way you could look at this stuff as somebody who is paid to say, whoa, no, we can't put that in a script. Oh, no, the censors are going to get us. Oh, no, we're going to be fine. Unless you're making money off of it. These are like dog whistles to pedos. Okay, well, I, I might see Ariana Grande upside down pouring water on herself on this episode. I'm definitely going to tune in. I want to see dogs licking peanut butter off children. Not Tate. Oh, I thought it was Tate. Oh, Penel you thought it was Penelope Tate. No, it was Penelope Tate, but I didn't really know what I didn't know what that was. I just thought it was a funny character. So um Dan told the female writers that they were not allowed to tell people what taint meant. And Nickelodeon um executives asked what it meant, and he lied to them and basically said, you know, oh, it's nothing, it's a made up word. Why are they really going to try to check him when he's making so much money and making moves for Nickelodeon? Dan would instant message the girls and tell them, and it's so funny when they said instant message, <laughs> gives you an idea of what years these were. Um, Dan would instant message the girls. When I say that, I mean the writers, of course, that's how, that's how he referred to them. He would instant message them and tell them to say things like stand up and scream, you idiot. Or stand up and scream, I'm a slut. He told one of the girls that he would pay her $300 to eat two pints of ice cream. So she did it and he never paid. So then he told somebody else in the office, y'all go ahead and um, if you kill this fly, I'll give you $30. And she goes, well, if I kill it, can we add that $30 to the $300 you already owe me? And he screamed at her, in my office now. And basically said, don't you ever disrespect me like that. But he hadn't paid the woman. Keep in mind, this woman is working for half of her salary. She's not even getting paid fully. So the thought of, you know, she went from, she said she was doing like temp, temp secretarial work to now she's working on the show, but she's probably making around the same amount of money. $300 is a lot of money for somebody who doesn't have a lot of money and you don't even give it to her. So she says she was actually throwing up and stuff from all this ice cream, but she was like, you know, $300 is $300. Didn't give it to her. And when she called him out on it in a funny way, he screams at her. It's such an odd, like, the whole, it's eerie. It's creepy. It's disturbing. He, like, It's disturbing, y'all. I was disturbed, so I thought I would show you the picture to disturb y'all as well. Um, Let's see. Raquel from The Amanda Show. I remember Raquel. I thought she was funny as hell. Let me pull her up. She says that while she was on set, her birthday passed. It was her 13th birthday, and they bought her like a huge cake. And Dan started screaming at everybody saying, she doesn't need a cake that big. What? Like, it's almost like an abuse of power just for the sake of an abuse of power. Why can't a 13-year-old kid have a cake? Um. So this is when they start talking about Amanda Bynes giving Dan neck massages. Somebody who was on the set said that Seeing Dan and Amanda was very uncomfortable. Um, they were very touchy feely, and she says she would. She this lady witnessed Amanda stand behind him multiple times and give him neck massages. Now, the first thing I thought about was Harvey Weinstein, who would take his actresses, or he would tell his actresses to come and meet him so they could run lines or look over a script in his room, and. His play would be, you need. Um, can you just give me a massage? So he would be in his towel, and he would expect these A-list actresses to give him a massage, and then that's when he would take advantage of them. For this man to have Amanda at such a very young age consistently giving him back and neck massages, it's a problem. It's a problem. 
Um, and then there was a scene where everybody thought this was strange. Amanda was in her bathing suit in a hot tub, and Dan was in the hot tub with her, fully clothed. What would be the point of that? What would be the point of this kid being in a bathing suit and you being in a hot tub with her? Okay. Um, so we're back to the, the female writers. They said that, these two ladies said that Dan would be looking at adult videos on his computer screen and they would ask the and he would ask the female writers to massage him while he looked at it. He would also say things like, you know what would be funny? Let's run these lines, but I want you to lean over the table and act as if you are being I'm just say uh, is penetrated a bad word? Act like you are being that from the back. From the poop shoot and run your lines and they would be like no and then he would force them to run the lines as if they are being s-o-d-o and y'all get the rest and they felt like they didn't really have a choice first off they're doing this for half the pay they this is their first time actually being able to write on at this level and this is the boss that they get both women said they did not want to do it, but they were forced to. Um, so mid-season of the first season of this show, a writer heard that with SAG, you're not allowed to split salaries. So once the investigation got started, Dan then calls this woman and, and threatens her and says, if I find out that you did it, You'll never work again. Now, in retrospect, you would think, oh, well, she should have, um, we can't say she should have anything because here's this very powerful man. He's allowed to get away with this from the executives. I don't like, I'm glad that she this woman will get into her lawsuit, but I'm glad that she found the strength to go ahead and sue him and say whatever, because they were being used. They were utilizing their services. They were sexualizing them. He was making them give massages. <sighs> and we wonder, we haven't even gotten to Drake Bell, who was actually on the Amanda show, but Drake Bell was actually physically assaulted by somebody this was this was a lot y'all that's why i couldn't do two episodes at once because that wendy williams stuff really took me out watching two hours of it straight <sighs> so they said that they felt like being around dan everything was very hot and very cold and one of the female writers said that Dan expected you to work basically 24 seven, seven days a week, two times during that season. She took the weekend off. One wants to go to a concert and the other wants to spend a weekend with her friends. He fired her. He's paying her half the price, but fires her because she takes two weekends for a whole season off to herself. She didn't take time off. She just utilized her weekend, which technically wasn't paid anyway. He fires her. The other lady let me show you her. The lady who ended up suing says that Dan called her into the office after the other woman was fired and basically said, we want to hire you for the next season. Um, we're going to give you a contract to pay you for 16 weeks, but the total amount of work will be 27 weeks, which would have meant that this woman who performed all of her job duties for one season, who only got half the pay would again, be working for free for 11 weeks. So this was like a big F you. We know you told on us. We are going to pay you half the money anyway. And his excuse was, we don't have the money for a salary, but you just fired the other lady. So technically, they could have given her the pay. This woman was smart. This woman was not scared of him. And this woman went straight to the lawyer. 
she also said that there was a, a white dude that was hired he had no he had no writing credits to his name and he was given a full salary so this dude was just like a misogynistic asshole one day he called all the men into the office he left the female he left the female employees out of the office then he brought the female employee into the office and told her to pitch in front of all the men. So as she is pitching the content that she wants, you know, to make the show, he tells her, didn't you used to be a phone sex operator? What? And she was like, no, but this was to degrade her. This was to embarrass her. This was to say, I know that you reported me, for stealing money from you, not paying you what I know I was obligated to pay you. I know you did this. Well, so I'm going to embarrass you and degrade you in front of all these men because I think these men are funny anyway. I don't even find female writers funny. That's what he was doing. So she goes out of the room. She's crying. She quits. And then she gets, in the, she gets a lawyer. Um, they end up suing Dan for gender discrimination, sexual harassment, and it was settled. But just like Dan told her, that would be the end of her career, and it was. Now, it wasn't the end of his career, right? Because he goes on to continue to be able to do things like this. This was a scene from the show where a potato is being stuck through a hole. What does this look like? It looks like a glory hole. But usually there would be a man part there. So you have these kids acting and playing in these scenarios where it looks like you are touching a man's private part. These things weren't even like loosely veiled. Um, so they released this, um, Nickelodeon said, in response to producers' questions, Nickelodeon has stated it investigates all formal complaints as part of our commitment to fostering a safe and professional workplace. We have adopted numerous safeguards over the years to help ensure we are living up to our own high standards and the expectations of our audience. I, I don't buy it. I think they don't have a choice now. But y'all were okay in stuff like this. Y'all were okay in stuff like this. Now, that's episode one. Episode two, we actually start getting into some really horrible things. This young girl got her first job on Nickelodeon. Um, her mom told a whole story of how she wasn't allowed to be in the business. And so she was super excited that her daughter was able to get onto the biggest show for kids at the time, which was the Amanda show. And this man, Dan, hold on. We'll get into this a little bit. Um, this man, Jason Handy, he was a production assistant. The mom said, and this is the mom. She said that Jason was very charming and charismatic. He would go out and talk to all the moms that were there for the kids because the moms weren't really allowed on set. So he would make them feel good. And he actually made them feel like they could be friends in real life. Again, ingratiating himself to these people. So this is a little girl. Her name is Brandy. Um, Brandy's mom really liked him. And so he allowed, she allowed her daughter to exchange emails and phone numbers with Dan. And Dan would tell her what other shows he worked on and, you know, actively work to try to get her work. So that was the whole point of exchanging emails with Dan. Um... The first email she got, the daughter showed her. It was one week later, and it was a very innocent email, again, talking about, like, business. Again, I don't know why he would need to talk about business with the daughter and not the mom or the management. Um, then she says that Dan began to email often. One day, I'm sorry, I could call him Dan. My bad. His name is Jason. One day, Jason sent Brandy a picture of him playing with himself. It upset the little girl. She ran into her room and her mom asked her what happened. So then her mom showed, then she showed her mom what had happened on the computer. And this is where I need y'all's opinion. And replay gang, 
put this in the comment section. This is an actual question. The mom begins crying. And she says, I don't know what to do. I don't think that I can report him to the police. So she does not report this adult man who sent her daughter videos of him playing with himself. She just says, what I need to do is not call the police. I need to take him out of her life and make sure that he never sees her again. I'm going to give you guys my opinion and I want your opinion. I think this is the most asinine thing I have ever heard in my life. You allowed this man to really take your child's innocence. And by not reporting him, you effectively uh, probably allowed him to do it to somebody else's child. And acting was your child's big dream. You have now taken acting out of her life and allowed this man to be around other children. I personally find fault in the mother not reporting this to the police. Now, y'all can tell me how you feel. You know, parents, let me know. Um, let's see. Agree. The police doesn't protect the, these kids. But if you took it to the police, whether you believe that the police can do something or not, once there is something in the system that says that you have done something like that, then that will follow you. That will follow you in your record. It will follow you where you live. It puts them into a system where they cannot get away from it. Look at Nicki Minaj's husband. I don't even think he can take um, his kid to school ever. You can't do it. Um... Not a damn. Okay, I agree. Asinine. Okay. Um, just as I hate that she didn't think she would be listened to when she had an actual proof. She's an accomplice by default when she had proof of what he did. The prophet said allegedly. What if she has the email, the prophet? She failed as a mom. The mom needs this. Tr <laughs> she protected herself and not her children. Okay, so y'all are kind of with me on this one. She could have stopped future instances. I felt like the mom was living through the daughter too. Exactly. The mom wasn't allowed to be a child actor. So I kind of wondered if she had done that, was she also thinking about what well, my parents are going to say, I told you so, which is disgusting. Um, Girl, was that, thank you so much for joining the membership. I appreciate you. And guys, we got like 1,400 in the chat. I don't even think we have 500 likes. So definitely hit that like button. Um, it's a free way to support the channel. And if you are new to the channel, please subscribe. Let's see. And we're going tomorrow. I think tomorrow, lunchtime. I think lunchtime is a good time for us to do. Wherever our, you want to go. Where are we going? <laughs> we're just, so check this out, yo. Um, we're going to do Justin Bieber because Justin Bieber got out of the frying pan and away from Diddy and went right into the fire. And I've been researching him, and this dude has had a hard life outside of the fame and the stardom, which kind of coincides with what we're talking about. So um, you guys did like this one. Definitely put the replay gang. If you want me to continue doing these, these are going to be shorter videos, probably like about 30, 35 minutes, respectively, um, going forward. But, yeah, Nickelodeon, I'm not surprised. But I am glad that so many people are coming forward. There's a lot of kids who were abused and a lot of kids put in adult situations that they didn't deserve just to just to be famous or just to be on a show. So y'all have a good night. I appreciate you guys for being here and I'm gonna see you tomorrow. But that Justin Bieber is gonna blow your mind. Yeah, definitely tiptoe and hit that like button. <laughs> All right, y'all. <laughs>